Hi, it's Barbara. Welcome back to Wiki Design. A little while ago, we did a poll on our channel and asked you what types of content you wanted to see from us. A lot of people responded by saying they wanted more information regarding WooCommerce. So this video is going to be dedicated to that, but be sure you're subscribed because I'm going to be making a lot more videos related to WooCommerce in the future. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a new WooCommerce video. I understand why people are requesting more information about WooCommerce. I feel like there isn't a lot of great documentation or tutorials on how to actually use the WooCommerce system. Now WooCommerce does have documentation on how to do things, but it's kind of clunky. And honestly, I feel like it's more geared towards developers rather than small business owners. If you're a small business owner and you're trying to set up an online store and you go and read the WooCommerce documentation, I bet it's pretty confusing to you. It's probably like reading another language because as a developer, it can be kind of confusing for me. So I totally understand why people are asking for more content and tutorials related to WooCommerce. My goal for these videos is to really help you get your store up and running and make it so that it's easy to manage. And I feel like that's something that the WooCommerce documentation lacks. They don't really go into what you need to do to make it something that's not such an overwhelming task. If there's something specific related to WooCommerce that you'd like me to go over, leave a comment down below and maybe I'll make a future video about it. Today, we're going to be talking about product variations in WooCommerce. Product variations are very common for online stores. If you're selling t-shirts, a variation could be the size of the t-shirt or the color of the shirt. So those are types of variations that you can have. And if you do it right, you can really organize your products in a way that becomes a lot easier to manage. But if you do it wrong, it can become a mess really quickly. So I want to show you how to use product variations properly. But before we get started on product variations, we do have to talk about getting organized. So before you even start adding products to your site, you really need to organize everything in a way that is easy to follow. And the best way to do that is probably with a spreadsheet. Now, I know some people hate the word spreadsheet and some people love the word spreadsheet. So depending on what side you're on, this could be a really fun task or a really boring, tedious one. But I do think it's something that is really worth mentioning because the more organized you can be, the better. Because you don't want to just start adding products to the site without really keeping track of what you're adding. So having a spreadsheet that's very organized and lists all the information regarding your products really is helpful. Things that you're going to want to add to your spreadsheet are the product title, the product description, the price, the SKU numbers, and the variations. So if you have variations based on size, color, different features, you're going to want to add those to your spreadsheet and keep it as detailed as possible. The more information you have in the spreadsheet, the easier it will be to manage your online store. You can have this master list to refer to. And when you go in to make updates to your store, it really does make it a lot easier. Another thing that you're going to want to do is label your product images based on what the product actually is. So if you're selling a red t-shirt, label the picture that corresponds to that product red t-shirt. Now this might seem obvious to you, but if you are handing your project over to a developer, it's not as obvious as the developer what images go with what SKU numbers. So having them labeled really does make a difference and will get your site up and running a lot quicker. And it also does keep things more organized for you. So just label your images according to what the SKU number is or what the description of the product is. So it just keeps things better organized. Once we've gotten everything organized for our store, it'll be time to start adding products to the website. So I'm going to walk you through how to do this in WooCommerce. You'll log into your WordPress dashboard like you normally would, and you will go to products. The first time that you click on this, you'll see these two buttons. You'll see create product, and then another one for start import. So having a spreadsheet can be really beneficial because you can just upload your spreadsheet into WooCommerce. So another really good reason why getting organized and having a spreadsheet can really help you out. But for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do it manually so you can see where everything is. So I'm going to hit dismiss 
on this and we're just gonna walk through this interface. The first thing you see is product name. So you're just gonna wanna put the name of your product in here. I'm just gonna put in t-shirt for this example. And that will generate your permalink for you so you can see the link to your product here. Underneath that, you'll put in your description. So whatever description you have for your product will go in this area. Underneath that, we have a bunch of different tabs and buttons. And this is where things I feel like get a bit confusing for people, especially with the variations because it gets confusing as to where you start to put SKU numbers and the weight and dimensions of stuff. So I wanna go through this so you guys know where to go. So the first thing you'll see here is the product data. So we have a few options. I feel like most of the time you're either gonna do a simple product or a variable product. Uh, depending on the type of site you have, you might have a grouped or an external affiliate product, but in general, I find most stores either do simple products or variable products. So we're gonna hit variable product in here because that's what this video is going to be about. So now we have these tabs on the left-hand side that we have to fill out as well. So the first one we have is inventory. So this is where you put your SKU number, but for variations, you don't actually put the SKU number here, which is why I find this to be confusing for most people because they think they're supposed to put the SKU number in this area, but they actually need to put it in a different place, which I'll get to a little bit down the road. Same thing for shipping. Shipping goes into another area, but for some reason they still show this as something that you can fill out in here. Uh, linked products, this is something that's really cool with WooCommerce. You can add upsells and cross-sells to your product. So if you, for example, are selling a shirt and you have a matching hat that you want to sell, you can maybe put that in the upsells or cross-sells. You just kind of search for the product, it'll show up in here, and then you can add it. And on the product page in the front end, there'll be an area that says related products where people can continue to shop. So it's a really cool feature of WooCommerce. Now, attributes is a very important part for variable products. This is where we actually begin to create the different attributes for our product that will create our different variations. So let me show you what that means. So we have a custom product attribute drop down here and we'll wanna hit add to that. And this is where we can put in different values. So we'll put the name of the value and then we'll put in the different attributes for it. So I'm gonna put size because we're selling t-shirts, so t-shirts come in different sizes. So we can do small, we can do medium, and we can do large. In order to separate them out, you'll wanna put this pipe symbol. And you also want to make sure that this is checked, used for variations, because we're going to use these variations in the next step. Another attribute that we might have for t-shirts is color. So I'm gonna add another one and I'm going to put in color here and then I'm going to put in white, the pipe, uh, cream, and black. And again, we'll want to make sure that this used for variations checkbox is clicked. Then we'll hit save attributes and we're gonna to go to the next step, which is to actually create the variations. So we click that button so we can use this drop down where it says create variations from all attributes. So if we hit go, it will automatically create all of the different variations for us. So we have nine variations added and you can see we have them listed right here. So small white, small cream, small black, and then so on. So it just goes through everything that we created in our attributes. So this is actually where you're going to want to put in different pictures for the products, different product information, like the SKU number and the size and dimensions. Uh, you're not going to want to put it in inventory or shipping. You're going to want to put it in here for variations. And you can expand everything by clicking up here and it will just expand the different tabs and you can put in all the information. So I've saved a couple images 
in here. So you can add an image for the product in here. So I'm just going to put in this white t-shirt and I'll put in a SKU number in here. You can make the SKU number whatever you want. You definitely wanna make sure it matches to whatever you have in your spreadsheet though. So you create that spreadsheet, make sure that it matches up in here, especially for inventory syncing, it really does make a difference. So you wanna make sure that's in here. You'll put in the regular price. If it's on sale, you can even put a sale price. You can put the stock status. This is where you'll put in the weight, the dimensions. And if you have a special shipping class for this, you can put that in there as well. You can even update the entire description. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like on the front end. So this is what it looks like on the front end after I've added all the information regarding my variations. So you can see that we have a full store here. We have our different images. We have our different options that we've created here and as we select different options, you'll see that certain things change. So we have a different image showing and we also have a description because I've added a description for each product. I also went in and added some general information just to fill this out a little bit more. So I did add a description for the product. For now, I just put in some dummy text. I also added a category. So depending on what products you're selling, you'll put in different categories here. You can also put in product tags if you want. And then down here, I put in just the three images associated with this product. So that is actually what shows up when you land on this page before you choose any option. So we have the main image and we have some images underneath just so it isn't showing something blank. But as you choose different options, you'll see that you know, things change. We have it saying a different description down here. If I change this to white, it will change to the white image and it will change the description as well. Now this is a very bare bones layout. I didn't do much styling to this. I have made a couple videos on how to style different WooCommerce pages using Elementor. So if you want to check those out, I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, but I wanted to show you just what it looks like pretty much out of the box with a generic theme. I'm using Generate Press for the theme for this site. Um, and this is what it looks like. Depending on what theme you use, it will look a little bit different, but you can style these pages in a lot of different ways. But I thought it would be nice just to show you what it looks like immediately after you just add in your information. So I hope you found this helpful when it comes to adding product variation to WooCommerce. I know it is a little bit confusing, especially if you're not a developer. So hopefully you got some good information from this. So that's it for today's video. I hope you got some good information regarding WooCommerce and I hope that I helped you set up your store in a way that's more organized. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because like I said in the beginning, I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos on WooCommerce. See you next time.